These are all the chart types that are available within Power BI. As you can see, there are quite a few options and it is overwhelming, confusing and not apparent when or how to use some of these charts. So let's go into one of them at a time. The first one is bar or column charts and we can use these to compare between two things. So here I have got a sum of amount by country and I can compare how various countries are performing with the total sales amount. We can use either a bar chart or a column chart to do such comparisons. When you have a date axis, try the column chart as well because it can provide better representation of dates or times. When making column charts, you can also use the legend and axis to add extra elements. So here is the sum of amount by country but now broken down by the teams and the teams are added as legend. If I select this chart, we can see from the chart settings here that country goes onto the Y axis and amount goes into the X axis and team is on the legend. So whatever you put on the legend that will take up separate colors. For example, if I were to put a product here, we have got quite a few products. So this is going to look like a barcode or a colorful rainbow. And these kind of things can be more noisy than useful. So you want to pick a field for the legend that is just a few different choices, something like category or team or something else. You can also use multiple levels. This is when you will put more than one item onto the major axis. So it will be either Y axis or X axis. So here I have put both my country and team as two levels within the graph. And what this will do is it will give you these kind of navigation buttons on the top. I like to call this one as the pitchfork icon. And when you use these buttons, you can actually drill down and see how things are happening at two levels. So for example, within each country, how various teams are doing. We can always go back up or you can go down to the next level directly using these two arrows to see how things are happening at a team level. So same chart can show different insights depending on what hierarchy level you are picking. And finally, we can also use the small multiple option to put the subcategory into the small multiple area here. So right now I have put team. So whatever teams we have, they all get split into four different charts. And this is quite helpful to make visuals where you still want to compare, but you also want to understand how each team is doing. Let's take a look at the next chart type, which is line and areas. The basic rule is use line or area charts to talk about trends. So the axis need to be a time or a date component by default. And you can use either a line chart, an area chart or a stacked area or line chart to convey the information. For example, here I'm showing the information of our sales by country as a stacked line chart. Many people make a mistake of creating line charts or area charts for things rather than dates and times. And that sort of a thing is meaningless. So here I have got a trend of our sales with our products. Now, when I look at this, I might think there is some sort of a pattern going on in our sales, but that sort of thing is meaningless because we are using product as the category axis. We can further prove this by sorting this chart into sum of amount and then you might think the sales are dropping again simply because we are using a thing as the axis not either date or time so do not make this sort of a mistake the next chart category is pies and donuts Let's stop pies. we can use this to either compare or show the full picture of various things so here i have got sum of amount by category and how our total sales are broken down by various categories of products that we have. And the same thing broken down by teams. You can use either pie or donut chart interchangeably. One thing that you want to watch out is do not make these kind of charts when you have got too many slices because it can kind of look like a rainbow disc without any meaningful information. The next type of visuals are cards. Use cards to show KPIs and important numbers in your data. So here I have got 
three cards showing me total sales, total shipments and this month sales. And when you want to show multiple items in one card, you can use the multi row card. These visuals are here. That is the card one and that is the multi row card. One important tip when it comes to cards is always add the context. So here I have got $743,000 as my this month sales by adding the context that from month on month, we went down 7.5%. I can feel a lot different about this number. I now know that this number is actually much better last month and it has gone down by 7.5% and I can ask better business questions. So always add context through some additional cards that are laid on top or bring something else to make the numbers meaningful. The next type of visuals are tables and matrices. We can use them to provide detailed view in our reports. Whenever I make a dashboard, I like to have a table or a matrix somewhere in it to provide that kind of a deep dive into the information I am presenting. So here I am using a table for this one and a matrix for this one to show how we are doing by each country and product category combination. Whenever you are using tables or matrices, do not forget to enhance them with some simple trickery like adding some nice theming around it, adding some sort order on important numbers, introducing conditional formatting through data bars or color scales and adding some important icons to point the movement of the data. The next type of charts are scatter plots and we can use them to either compare things or show the spread of information on two dimensions. So here I'm showing how we are doing by salesperson in terms of shipments and total sales. Like for example, I want to understand if there is anybody who is doing few shipments, but a lot of money. As you can see, this scatter plot kind of points in a general direction like this, which means the more shipments people are doing, the more money they are generating for the company. But there are some exceptions though. For example, here is one uh, Srinivasa and he has done only 45 shipments but generated $360,000, dollars Whereas here is one person who has done 54 shipments still made less than this person there. And when you have a scatter plot, you can set up a date onto the play axis to show an animated story of the data. This is really fun and not many people know it. So I'll show you this from the scratch. This is the usual scatter plot with X axis and Y axis. And if I now click on play axis and add data and let's bring the date here. And now we have got dates at that level. I'm just going to go into the date hierarchy to be honest. And uh, let's add month as well. So we have got month. And now if you click on this play button, I can actually see how things have changed since January up until August. This play axis thing is quite helpful because you can see the movement of data over periods of time. And you can in fact track someone's movement by selecting on their dot. You can see how they have fluctuated over a period of time. Quite helpful if you ask. The next visual type is waterfall chart. And this is very useful to show the change or contribution of things from one point in time to another point in time. So here I have got total sales by year and month and product and I'm comparing how things are in 2022 January versus how things are in 2022 August. So in January 2022, we had about $896,000 sales and they went down to 743 in August. And this chart explains what happened, what was the reason behind that change. Even though we had more sales coming through the 85% dark bars, all other products kind of went down and that is why we have less sales in August. When you are making charts, do not forget about titles. So instead of leaving the general title, add a meaningful title like Australia has most sales followed by UK. You can either manually type this if you select the chart and go to format. In the title area here, you can type the title. Recently, Power BI also introduced an option to have a subtitle. So use both of these options to tell a better story about your data. So you can type this title or you can alternatively write a measure that generates the title and use the conditional formatting feature to bring the dynamic title. 
The second tip is highlight important information. So here I have said the title is Australia has most sales and I've also highlighted Australia in green color so that the visual tells a better story. And finally, if you have some additional information that you want to present on the chart, add some tooltips. So here I have added a tooltip page that shows me the breakdown of that Australia sales by various categories. And if I go to a different country, I can see that information clearly visible to me, making that entire chart even better. I have got a video on the channel that talks about how to add these tooltips. Check it out if you don't know how to make them. You might think, okay, in my charting options, I have got so many other charts. What about all of these other things? Everything else use with caution. caution. If you are just starting out with Power BI and not really sure what visuals to use, I recommend sticking to the ones that I have introduced so far. But let's just say you want to try out some of the other options that are available in the menu, like the funnel chart or the AI visuals or something else. I suggest trying them out, showing that report or outputs to your audience, getting their feedback and making changes as needed. And when you combine all these charts, you can create beautiful sales dashboards or reports from your data. If you would like to know how to create this kind of a report from your data, check out the video that shows up on the screen. I'll catch you there. Bye.